Hey guys, Clint Coons here, and in this video, we're going to talk about the difference between using a manager-managed LLC versus a member-managed limited liability company for your rental real estate. Okay, now if you don't know what the difference is between a member-managed and a manager-managed LLC, it has to do with how the LLC is set up. So when you form a limited liability company, you have the option to set up an LLC as either member-managed, all right, or manager-managed. And what that means is this. If I was creating an LLC here, and I set it up as a member-managed LLC, then the actual members of this LLC that I'm setting up have all the decision-making authority. So they decide what's gonna go on. If we wanna buy a piece of property, then the members are deciding how that deal is gonna play out. And the members are signing on all the agreements. If you're gonna rent the property out, you're self-managing, right? Then the members are dealing with the tenants like this to, to lease the property. So in a member-managed LLC, you've got the members controlling it. In a manager-managed LLC, we're deciding, no, we're not gonna have the members control. We're gonna appoint a manager up here to be in control of the LLC. And then the manager is going to be the one who deals with the tenants and deals with the insurance company and all the other parties that have to do with your LLC and the real estate that it owns. Now, the managers, of course, can be both of the members of this LLC in my example, or it could just be one. Maybe we just assume that this person here is gonna be the manager. This one doesn't want to do anything on a management level. So you can, you can pick with a manager-managed LLC. But in a member-managed LLC, all of the members have to be involved in the controlling decisions because that's the way it's set up. It states that all the members have control uh, of that limited liability company or a certain percentage uh, have the control over the LLC. So if I'm into real estate, then the question is when I'm creating my uh, LLCs, which should I be looking at when it comes to setting these things up? Well. What I always look at, and I ask people, I said, how much of your information do you want disclosed? Do you want people to know that, or do you care if they know if you own the LLC or not? Because if you're looking for a structure whereby you have anonymity, so that people don't realize, or your tenants don't realize that you're the owners of these limited liability companies, then you're going to be setting up member-managed LLCs for your entire portfolio. Now, what I mean by that is you're going to set up a member managed LLC where the member's in control. And the important thing here to know is that with the member managed LLC is that the member's information is going to be listed with the Secretary of State. That is, when you make the filing, if I was setting this LLC up in Washington State and I indicate that it's going to be member managed, then Washington State will ask me who is the member of this limited liability company as the member manager. So if I want anonymity, then I sure as heck don't want to do this, put myself on there as the member and enlist myself there because that doesn't give me any anonymity. If you look at this LLC, you see these people down here. So instead, what we're going to do is create that Wyoming holding LLC that I like to draw here. This is the first entity we're going to set up right here, this Wyoming LLC, and it's going to be the member of our real estate LLCs. So when we're creating this type of structure, we're gonna set up member managed LLCs. So all of our real estate LLCs will be member managed. And they're gonna be member managed by one member, which happens to be this one Wyoming LLC. So when you set this Wyoming LLC up, I can have as many different member managed LLCs that I wanna create all pointing down to this one company right here. This gives me anonymity. Now, what is the drawback to doing this type of structuring? Okay, setting these LLCs up this way. Well, if you're gonna apply for lending, you wanna work with lenders, then this can add some complexity to your overall structure because when they look here and they see this entity, and then they look at this entity and they don't see anything because you set it up in Wyoming. And if you watch many of my videos, I talk about the benefits of using Wyoming, that they don't collect any information so no one knows who's involved. Then it can be a problem in trying to get that loan through underwriting or working with title. Now for residential real estate, 
this typically isn't a concern because you're not going to be obtaining a loan in the actual LLC. You have to get it in your own name because most of them are underwritten by Freddie or Fannie. But if you're working with a community bank and they are willing to write a portfolio loan for you or give you a portfolio loan on these properties, so you're going to actually close in the LLC, then what you'd want to do is first have this discussion with them. I tell my clients this all the time when they come to me and, they, and I'll get an email or a phone call. Hey, what should I give the lender? Like, I don't know. Why don't you pick up the phone and call the lender and ask what the lender wants to see? Because every lender is going to be different. And that's why you should have this conversation ahead of time. If you want to use this type of structure, then you should be in communication with your title company, your, your lender that you work with, so they become familiar with what you're doing and they have that level of comfort then to understand how this is all coming together. Some things that will come up on occasion is you may need a, an attorney's letter. I've done this before. I've issued out a, a letter to title for closing the gift to escrow that yes, I could attest to who the actual person was that owned the Wyoming LLC and that's all they needed then to go through closing. And the reason why we had to do that is because all of these LLCs were member managed by this Wyoming LLC of which, you know, my client is down here. He owned this and escrow, you know, title, they couldn't see any of that because of the protection we provided them. So they wanted the attorney to go on the line and say, yeah, it's really this guy. So member managed, great if, if you want anonymity, but it adds that additional layer of complexity if you're trying to obtain loans in the LLC. Now, if that doesn't matter to you and you're not going to be, um, you're not concerned about anonymity and you just want to set up an LLC where it's going to give you the most flexibility as far as dealing with third parties, then I would consider using that manager managed LLC. Because when that entity is set up and you set up the manager managed LLC, again, the state's going to ask for information on who is the manager of your LLC. And if that's you, you're there and you're also the member. So you're the manager and you're the member of this company. So all that gets disclosed. So if I was, uh, say it was Chase Bank and you're working with Chase to, to get, get a loan together and you're going to buy it in the name of the LLC, it's not residential. Let's say it's a sixplex, so it's commercial. They could just pop right on the Secretary of State's website, verify they see you as the manager, they see you as the member, you have all the authority to sign on behalf of that document, boom, and away it goes. The other time in which you would definitely want to use a manager-managed structure like this is when you have other partners involved. So if I had uh, a couple of minority partners in this venture where I'm here owning 80% and these guys have this minority interest of 10% each, they're bringing, you know, they're, I brought them in for a small equity piece on this deal. I don't want this to be a member managed LLC because most likely the lender is going to say, hey, we need all of these people to go on, on that uh, loan, qualify and deal with all of them. Even though it's probably a non-recourse loan, they're going to be running credit and stuff on all of these members. But if you make it manager managed, you know, it's going to be you, you as a primary mender, you'll keep these guys out of it. Even though they're under the 20%, I've seen situations before where lenders will still try to drag them in if it's a member managed LLC because they have control over the company. So in that case, if I'm dealing with a minority interest in my company under 20%, and I'm working with lenders and I know I'm going to be buying property in the name of the LLC. Again, this is more in the, this is on the commercial side, or it could be a portfolio lender as well. Go the manager managed route. What are you giving up when you go the manager managed route for that limited liability company? You're going to give up anonymity because your name again is going to be on there because you're going to have to list somebody down there. Now, one way around that I have found is you could create an out-of-state Wyoming LLC. You can create this Wyoming LLC over here, bring it in as the manager. Um, so again, it provides some anonymity. So this is a state-specific LLC. The only listing the Wyoming LLC information as a manager, but you've got all these guys down here as the member. I've seen some, uh, some more acceptance of this type of structure in certain situations where the lender will be like, all right, great. We, if we look on the Secretary of State's website, we see that there's an LLC that's the manager. We'll, look, we'll ask for the docs for the LLC manager. We'll see that you're involved in it over here. Clint's running this company. 
as a manager managed and met, he owns it. And then they look at your operating agreement for this company here and they see who all the members are. It gives them a little more comfort than that man member managed structure for whatever reason because of the fact that there's more parties disclosed on the operating agreement. So you can actually get the copy of this LLC that's closing on the loan and you can see who the members are because in the member managed, you can't. All you see is Wyoming. And so this structure seems to work a little better in, those, in that context where you're going to be getting the loan directly in the LLC in my experience. Granted, it's not a one size fits all like anything in real estate investing. That is why if you intend to get a loan, you're going to be working with a lender and the loan is going to be through that LLC. Your best course of action initially is to approach your lender and explain to them the options that you're considering and finding out from them what they're going to need from you in order to get that deal closed. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I know it went a little deeper and more technical than what I typically do, but these are important concepts when it comes to using your limited liability company and setting it up. Things you should be uh, thinking about when putting that first LLC or multiple LLCs together. All right, take care.